strings, some of the weird stuff involving strings, or some, a bit about working with non-English text, uh, and then showing you str view, especially the interactivity that you get from str view, and uh, seeing how it interacts with regular expressions. So we'll talk more about that in a bit. Uh, but the idea is to use this command str view to get a sense of uh, uh to to find matches, uh, and these matches are the way you construct these matches is through a particular language which is called regular expressions, and then there's there's some exercises about how to form strings from from old ones, um, uh, yeah sorry yeah thanks Lydia, uh so. And then the contrasts among the different uh, commands that you might have seen before. Uh, yeah. And then this week, what 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 I'll do is to dig a bit further, wrap up chapter 14 using these uh, these three three things here. Um, how SDRC operates with data frames, because I think that's the emphasis uh, in a lot of the examples are vectors, but really the emphasis is to make them work with data frames. Uh, and then the other one is this str glue, which has its own idiosyncrasies too. Uh, and it could be a, a bit overwhelming to determine which, which commands to use, to be honest. And then the other thing is the family of separate commands, which I think is the most useful set of commands you would encounter in chapter 14, especially when you are when you have a specific question already in mind, well formulated, and then you want specific portions of uh of a string, this is the way to go. One way to go. Uh and then there are a couple of nice examples in chapter 14 about uh, baby name trends. So I'll, I'll share them with you as well. And then afterwards, we'll go to chapter 15 uh, about regular expressions. Yeah. So roughly that's the outline. So in the code for chapter 14, uh, I'll move directly to how you could form new strings from old through in the data frame context. So these are examples from the book and uh, this is the first uh, data, uh, sorry, I should load, yeah. So load the tidyverse package first and then do this. And then from here, you could, or this is your, your data frame, a tibble here, Flora, David, Tara, and then a missing, uh, missing value. And then if you want to create a string that involves high to high, and then the name of the person, then STRC allows you to do this uh, concatenating of strings. And then you create a new very a new column called greeting using the mutate command. Okay, so this works very well in, in, in this situation. So uh, as you may notice, STRC has a way of handling NA, which might be different from paste as you've seen from last week. So here, when you see NA, it will also give you NA, which is, I think, a good default, okay? Uh, and then in case you want uh, a brace in the name for whatever reason, okay? Uh, for whatever reason you want to put braces in the name, you could do that too. Uh, and here's a literal brace that you could do. Okay, so you have the high, and then you have the open, uh, the open brace, and then the name, from the data frame and then the close brace. So as you can see, the name here is not in quotation because it's not a string. Here you want to refer to the column, the elements of the column name. So that's the main difference uh, when, you, when you look at STRC, the ones with quotations and the ones without quotations. And then there's another command called str glue, which, which sort of like operates in a very similar manner, but makes it a, uh, but I think it's can be concise in some way, but also has its own idiosyncrasies. So str glue has this kind of format. So if you if you want to do str glue and then you want to use 
elements of your observations in your data frame to form the string, then what you need to do is to enclose what you want to put into the string from the columns, from, the, from a particular column of your data frame inside braces. Okay, so that means that the brace here is a very special character from the point of view of str underscore glue. Okay, so if you contrast uh, line 141 and line 145, the brace here is not, spe it's, it's taken literally, but here it's not taken literally, it's special because it's in terms of str glue understands it in a, in a particular way. So this is this sort of like this distinctions uh, are something to pay attention to in chapter 14 and especially in chapter 15, like which which is literal and which is special and how these uh, things interact with some of the commands that you're going to be using. So I, I, I think it can be a bit overwhelming to know all of them at once. So I think it's experience that will ultimately uh help you get there so let me just show you what this looks like there so as you can see if you compare the output from line four one four one and line one four five here you have a literal string the sorry you have the braces are treated literally but here the braces are not treated literally okay so a line one forty five achieves the same thing as line one thirty nine okay but if you want to have a literal brace so that you could do what strc does literally with the open brace then you have to escape it and if you and here in str glue you escape using double braces this time okay so that's why you see double braces this time here there and now you would see a very weird thing happening with str glue str glue again differs from strc with the way it treats missing values so here it coerces the na into a into a character okay and becomes high na and then this one is high with literal braces for na so that's uh that's something to pay attention to and then there are other things that I I put in the R script that I might I probably would skip for now, but from the help file of str glue, you would see other other ways of uh, using this command. You could actually have a string that is longer and could get names from and could get information from other columns of a of a data frame. So something to this effect. So you have my name is this one and then the age plus one. And you could do operations as well before you do, before you put it in the string. So I think this is very useful if you're, this str glue thing is probably very convenient if you want to do automated emails, I think. Automated emails, automated messages. Uh, so I, I think some, probably some people have done this before, but something to think about too and then there are variations here that i put in the script that i invite you to look into and i also want to point out a curiosity here in uh 165 to 172 where i use the name twice and then i have two names here okay and what will happen in this kind of situation uh yeah so just so I just put it there for for interest in case you're interested. Okay. There are other things that I also put in the in the R script, like a base R implementation of uh, or at least how I how I would have done it, and you could have a look as well. Um, I'll skip this coalesce part because this is really about how you want to automate the treatment of missing values. Uh, in my experience, I think for missing values you have to set them aside or at least to to not try to work with them in an automated way uh because every missing value is again missing in their own for for their own reasons so if you're interested in in how to automate the treatment of missing values you could have a look at coalesce 
Uh, and this one is an example from the book. Basically, it, it sort of like, if it encounters an NA, it adjusts accordingly to how you specified the coalesce command. Okay. Um, and then there's a nice exercise in section 14.3, which I think I, I'll share with you here. One of the exercises that is very interesting is this one here. Okay. So this one reminds me of uh, LaTeX, which is a document preparation system. Uh, it's it's sort of like you you feed in a, a text file and then some uh, processing system goes through that text file and generates either a PDF, a PostScript file, or or something else. Okay, so uh, this is very useful for math ki mathy kind of things. So uh, so I'm I adapted this uh, this exercise here and modified it a bit. I wanted to write down lines of Co lines of LaTeX code. Uh, this is the the spelling of it. So this LaTeX code, um, it, you you could create sections automatically. You could create subsections automatically. And this this set of commands that you see here is quite nice for that uh, uh, for that reason. So you could either. So I here what I did was to combine strc, uh, with sort of like a vector of uh, possible section titles. So you have the introduction, literature, methodology, and so on. So this this might be interesting for those who don't want to type, right? Uh, so you could have a look and it will give you something that looks like this. Okay. So you here I even put a new line so that it sort of like generates uh, a space. And then in fact, you could make this very complicated uh, and then write something here for in between these sections if you want to okay you could also do str glue but again taking into consideration that when you see something like this this brace here is taken literally so you have to escape them in str glue so it's this is roughly how i would how i would do it okay so that's uh sort of like strc str glue and then the the remaining command in in 14.3 one of the oh yeah the remaining command in 14.3 is this str uh flatten okay so here what it does it it sort of like creates uh it converts a vector of characters into a single string so this might be useful. This this might be very very useful, uh, in situations where you want to create a, create a, a listing of things, uh, for your observation. Um. So for example, this letters. Is all the letters of the alphabet. So so here you have a vector of letters. Okay, twenty six uh characters inside this vector, uh, and if you do str flatten it sort of like put them all into one uh into one string okay and you could also put commas in between like this and you could also put spacing in between them if you want to and you could also do some modification like this okay and um we'll see later on some other uses for this uh command but uh, the chapter emphasizes that it could be useful for summarize. So I think this is very useful for uh, situations where you have um, you have groups, and then for and then you have repeated observations of each group, and you have sort of like their uh, if you want their purchases if you want. So let's say for for this one you have the people that you have observed multiple times and you could think of this column here as the fruits that they bought okay and if you do a summary you basically could create a listing of uh what they bought let's say what fruits they bought okay something to that effect okay uh to be honest i i haven't i i don't 
know if there would be an occasion for for me to use this so i'll leave it as such for for the moment okay perhaps the the more interesting set of commands are in section 14.4 which involve separating separating into rows or into columns okay so the the section deals with separating into 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 rows first then then columns uh i think the separation into rows is probably not as used but you could have a look so for example we'll we'll go back to the to this data frame where you have where you have the names of the people and then the fruits that, that you could think of this as the fruits that they like or the fruits that they bought okay and you could do a summary as uh, as I've done earlier, okay? And I'll put it in a data frame, I'll call it DF1. And then if I, and if you take a look at DF1, it's really a listing. I could undo this by using the separate longer delim. And then the delim here is the delimiter, the one that separates the characters no, from each other, okay? So this is the one that, that's your separator, okay? And if you do that, you'll get something that looks like this. Okay, so it's not very it's not very perfect though. So as you, as you may have noticed, for DF one, the comma is followed by a space. So it's really separate when you when you do the separation only with a comma, it puts the space into the next into the next uh, item. Okay, so that makes it uh, that makes it important that you specify the delimiter very very well. Okay, so if you if you did it very well, like comma and then a space, then it looks much nicer. Okay, uh, so what it does it it um it splits your uh row. Sorry, it you have a vec you have sort of like characters here, and then you split it into into rows. Sorry, there's a chat. Let me see. Oh, thank you, Jeremy, for this one, for this uh, any argument stuff. Ah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let me see. Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. So um, again. The, these commands are only as good as how the delimiters are, are, are these delimiters uniformly applied? If they're not uniformly applied in the sense that, for example, for example, here, what if you have a separator that is comma only without a space, and then here there's a comma and then a space, then this becomes a bit more complicated to work with. So, so the the usefulness of these separate commands will own will really be very very apparent when there's a uniformity in the way they they've used the delimiter and you have to make sure that there's only one deli sorry one type of delimiter so that means that they're separated either by all commas and then you you would split it into rows okay but if you have different delimiters and you want to split with depending on the type of delimiter, then this becomes more complicated. Um, and then there's also something that you could split into rows again, it using position rather than uh the, the, the delimiter, meaning that you are uh looking at the length of each element of your character. So for example, for this one, DF2, you have the characters one, two, one, one, length. So this, the, the, there are four positions here, okay? Or if you want, uh, you have uh, one, two, three, and four, the first, second, third, and fourth positions. If you want to do width equals one, then what it does is it splits it according to the first, first position and then the next one is, and so on one two one 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 three one and then uh two one okay so pick one character out okay 
Ah, STR trim. Yeah. Thanks for that. I I I, I haven't encountered that. Yeah. So you can have a look at the STR trim package to clean up the white spaces. Yeah. Okay. So um, the you could also compare what happens when you do width equals two. So that means you take you stop at the second item. So you have one, two, and then it goes to one, one. And then the next one will be one, three. And then here it splits into one and then stops. Okay. So this is something uh, to take notice of. And then for two, one, it, it's with two anyway. So that's fine. Okay. Now, I think the most, the more, I think the, the one that is most used is this separate wider delim. Uh especially when you have survey, like if you if you send out questionnaires or if you yeah, if you deal with surveys kind of stuff, and then someone encodes the data from the survey in a very particular way, either someone or the computer does it. Uh and it appears in a sort of like a uniform kind of format. The delimiters are the same. And then the the positionings are are correct are rough, are roughly similar. If that's if you're in this kind of situation, then separate wider delim might be useful if you want to split these items, each of these items into columns. So presumably this is like a book where you have a code, the edition, and then the year it probably published or or bought that that isn't very clear so so let's say you have a dewey decimal kind of system or some other library coding system this might be useful for uh for for separating uh into parts that you might be needed might might, might need um this might also be useful for telephone numbers so telephone numbers that are formatted in a very specific way. So let's say if you're a US resident, uh, there's always an area code. Uh, there's a three digit area code. Uh, and then you, you could sort of like, if you want the area code only, you could you could use separate wider delim and that, and that kind of situation. Again, provided that the phone number is formatted in a very specific way. So you can have a look as to what what happens to this to this part, okay? And basically, you're using this dot as this as the separator, and then splits this into three parts. The first part becomes called code, and then the second is addition, and then the next one is year. Okay, so this is very very extremely convenient uh, to work with. Uh, just just pay attention to the fact that the columns are actually characters. Okay, so in case you want to process by year. Uh, or if you if there's information here that is quantitative, um, then you might have to pay attention to that. Okay, and then you could uh, you could create data frames that create problems like this one, okay, where the formatting is not exactly uniform because you have an extra extra part here, and this one will choke there. So it will tell you that there's something wrong, okay? Uh, so as you may have noticed, you have different options here. And my personally, I think the debug option is the best way to go because the debug option allows you to get a sense of, to do triage later on, okay? So like, okay, there's a problem with this particular there's a problem with this particular entry. I want to separate that later on. Okay, so things that work, I leave them alone, and things don't work, I'll I'll take a look further. So I think this too many debug is probably the way to, one. I think the way to go to do the triage later on. I for silencing this message. I think this is a. This will depend on your circumstance, and I I think I might skip this for the sake of time. But I, you could have a look in in the book for more about this uh, about this part. My personal position is to really do the debug so that you could see what happens, uh, or what is happening, and then you could uh, act accordingly. 
Okay. So if you do debug, you'll get something that looks like this. Okay. As you can see, it it gives you sort of like the, the original X here. Okay. The original X here shows up as an additional column. And then you have X OK, X pieces, and X remainder. Okay. So it shows you the original, what it kind of look, what it looks like originally. Okay. And then, oh, yeah, sorry, I I removed the other. Oh, yeah, I, I should have done it the other way. Sorry. Let me let me just put it this way. Yeah, so that it yeah, let me put it this way. So that yeah, this is better. There. So here you have the dot one showing up and it's false because this is not the same, the pattern that you want. And then they are expecting three pieces, but here you have four pieces and then you have what's left behind, okay? So this is very useful for doing really triage. And then you could separate the parts that are not okay and then do some work later on for them or separate them into a different data frame. That's what I would have done. Uh, if there's such thing as too many, then you could also do too few, okay? Like this one that you see here. Let me see the chat. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so this is very, so, so for, you could also do too few. And then you could also do the wide, separate wider with position this time. And pretty much you go through the same kind of thing. So here you have year equals four, meaning that you want the first four and then the next two for age and then the next two for state, okay? And again, it's expecting a particular format, okay? And if you do a slight change, if you do a slight change, like you could see here in lines 307 onwards, you could do, you, you could find which are problematic and then do some triage later on, okay? Okay, I think that's uh that's it for for the remaining part of chapter fourteen. Sorry, it took uh quite long to to do it. It's actually a bit long. Um, and then there's also a, a remaining command that I noticed might be very useful, and I think I've done it before, and it's this str length and this str sub. Okay, so for str length, it's really just counting the length of uh of a string okay so you could have a look uh this str length is different from the length command okay so you could have a look as to what it does if you remove this part okay now uh the next part is really visualization of uh of uh baby names um there is an exercise that talks about why we have wt equals n um i don't know if um uh, i don't know if it will uh if we will have enough time for that but uh, essentially here what you're doing here is that you want to look at uh lens of ba of baby names so if you're interested in this uh in this stuff you could have a look at the at the commands that i put there uh but i want you to notice a couple of things about this these baby names is that they are sort of like entered every year. So so there's a column for years and then you have the names, okay? Um, another thing that I also want to point out is that this part, let me just show you the baby names that are length 15. And if you have a look, you would notice that there's a truncation for the names. So just so you know that these baby names are are not the full are not really full names, full first names. Also, you could see someone here Maria del Rosario, okay? So this is probably the first name and the last name. Okay? So they sort of like get get mixed up. So I don't know if you should put a lot of cachet on this on this baby names data set, but it's it's still a fun data set to work with. Uh, and then you have this 
this uh lady here maria de los probably this de los angeles probably something like that okay um yeah so that's what i wanted to point out for this part and you could uh do some summaries uh like the length of the baby names you could also do visualizations you could also look at what's the first letter of the name the last letter of the name and it's the str sub which you've seen last week as well um, and then I answered a couple of the exercises here. Uh, I think I'll let you have a look. Uh, and then if you have feedback, let me know. Um, uh, and then there are also visualization attempts. So if you want to see, let's say the, the pattern of the first name, first letter trends, uh, you could have a look as well. And uh, let me just show you just so that there's something colorful. Yeah. So this one, quite colorful. Um, let me let me see. There, quite colorful, but too colorful, I think. Uh, because you have 26 letters of the alphabet and it's hard to distinguish the letters and the colors here are, are the contrast, it's it's harder to see. And there's an overlap here. So this is my first attempt, and it's not the best uh, attempt, but it looks nice. Nice, but not informative. Um, but you could also do something that looks like this, where you have uh, the proportion, uh, the proportion of names names that have a particular letter. You could also do that, and it's sort of like a stacked bar graph, and it's proportional. So you could also do it this way. The top part is like A, and then the bottom part is like. Uh, I think Z, hopefully, but my eyes might not be very, oh no, not Z, but probably W, okay. Z shows up around this part, around the 2000s, okay. So this might be nice, but uh, again, uh, it's probably not very informative because there's a lot of, there are a lot of colors here and the contrast is not very good, um, yeah. I'm curious, what are the, there's some lines there or like, are they each individual bars? I'm not sure actually what, th what these lines are, to be honest. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what these lines are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is very pretty though. <laughs> it, but, but, that's a, but that's about it. <laughs> you, 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 I think you could get a sense of which letters are sort of like dominant or showing up. But that's about it. Not very, not very, very informative. The contrast is not very good, and it it's kind of kind of painful after a while. Yeah, there. Um. Yeah. So I'll 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 stop here for chapter fourteen. Uh, you can have a look at some of the the answers to the exercises or some of the exercises, and if you have uh comments and feedback, let me know. Uh, maybe I've I've done it wrong. Let me know as well. Um, yeah, the next uh the next part is really the regular expressions part, which is really the topic for for this week. Um, again, this chapter is kind of overwhelming too. There are many things to pay attention to. Uh, for one thing, you need to know what regular expressions are. This is really a lang so here it says that it's a it's a language for describing patterns within strings. So it's very, very useful to for looking for matches. So whenever you try to find something in in an HTML page, chances are they're using this regular expressions to find a match. Or if you've ever used wildcards, so when you search, let's say in Windows, like star.jpg, then what it does is looks for everything that has a JPG file extension. So that kind of um, uh, those wild cards, those things that you've done for finding stuff on a page probably uses this regular expressions kind of technology. It's very parallel to this. Um, yeah. So what makes regular expressions uh, complicated is that they're they're also in a string, they have a string representation. Okay, they have a string representation. So you have the regular expression itself, and then you have the string, ex the string 
representation of that regular expression, okay? Uh, distinguishing the, between the two will help in reading the chapter. Um, the chapter builds from the basics, which I've done last week, okay? And for last week, I sort of like run through a couple of the nice things about STR view in terms of its ability to find matches interactively. Uh, and then you, and then I also sort of like mentioned a couple of terms. Literal characters are those that are letters and numbers that are matched exactly. And then you have these punctuations, which are overloaded. They, they, they have extra meaning. So they could be taken literally or they could have special meanings. So if they have special meanings, then they are called uh, meta characters, okay? Um, and then something to pay attention to in the chapter as well is what is special, what is treated as special for certain situations might not be special in another situation. And you've seen this in STR glue as well. So this is something to also pay attention to in the chapter, okay? Another thing, another um, type of uh, pattern is this quantifier. Uh, I've also done this last week where you have question mark plus and star. Question mark is matching zero or one time. And then plus is really match at least once. And then star is greater than or equal to zero. So you can think of question mark as uh, optional, zero or one, yes or no. And then plus is really greater than or equal to match greater than or equal to one. And then star is match greater than or equal to zero. Okay. And then uh, I also did this uh, last week uh, where if, so it's, as you can see, this part is the reg, that part is the regular expression. Okay. So this one, that's the regular expression, a dot, 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 e. So match an A, match an E, and then anything in the middle. So the dot there is anything, any character, okay? And then the quotes, putting them into quotes becomes the string representation of the regular expression, okay? So, so my suggestion is to always build the regular expression first and then make the string representation later on. Okay, so that you don't uh, uh, mix up the two. Okay, it, it can be vexing sometimes. Okay, so here you have A, B question mark. Uh, what it does is match an A and then match a B, but the B is followed by a question mark. So what this means is that the B will be matched zero or one times. Okay, and here you already can feel an ambiguity is it the a b that is matched zero or one time or is it just the b so here it it answers that question here okay but you would automatically feel that there's a there's a uh the way these uh the, the the way the question mark sort of like interacts with the parts of your regular expression, there's sort of like precedence as well. Like when you when you add and multiply things, which goes first, it it's reminiscent of that thing here as well. Okay. So uh, AB question mark and then AB plus and then AB star, okay? So here, what happens is that the star operates on B only, okay? Rather than AB. So if you want to, so let me just show you this. Okay. So this one matches B at least, uh, sorry, uh, zero or one time. If you put them in parentheses, yeah, see, it looks a little bit different, right? Okay. So the parentheses also has special meaning here. It becomes a, a, a grouping kind of thing. Okay. So it matches an A, B, zero or one time. So you could see a match here that is the empty, a zero with a uh, character here, okay. okay? And then A, B here, matched once, and then zero with, 
okay okay so that this is what you what you see if you compare and contrast these two commands so my suggestion when you when you look into chapter 15 is to try modifying the regular expressions and then yeah there's a motorcycle and <laughs> And then you you sort of like create your own uh you know your own examples. Try weird the weirder the better, so that you could sort of like see how your regular expressions uh really do behave. Okay. Let me see. Yeah. yeah. And then there's another thing, there's another type of pattern which is called character classes, which are in uh square brackets. Okay, so again, this these square brackets have a special meaning as well. So sometimes it might be very painful to write down a long list of things that you want to match. So you could put them into a set of characters, into a character class like this. So here, if you have something like a regular expression like uh, square brackets A, B, C, D, then you match A, B, C, or D, okay? And then the caret here, Okay, has another special meaning within the reg within the square brackets. Okay, so you will see later on the caret having a different special meaning if it's outside of the square brackets. So that's that's why it's a uh, uh, it can really be vexing to work with 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 these uh, regular expressions. Okay, because because you have to really be very uh, specific about what you. What you in what you want to look for, okay, and how you're gonna look for it, okay. So when you see something like this, and it acts on the whole set of characters here, okay. So except A, B, C, or D, okay. And you could see, and these examples sort of like get, give you a sense of uh, what's happening, and then you could do cases through alternation, and it's using this, uh, uh horizontal uh yeah uh, sorry vertical line okay i don't i forgot what it's what what it's called in english but yeah there's a name for it but uh i'll leave it at at, at such uh, that's gonna bother me for a while but yeah um yeah so i'll go back to the code in chapter 15 okay uh the one that i gave and you could have a look in section 15.3, okay, after seeing all of those pattern basics, uh, you could get a sense of uh, the commands, a comparison between the commands str view, str detect, and then str count. It depends on the purpose, what you want to do, okay? So here, the regular the regular expression here is to match any, uh, match a vowel, okay? Match a vowel. So this one, gives you this, this one is the match, A, okay, which it's doing right. STR detect, what it does is it gives you, it goes through everything and then determines whether there's a match or not. And then gives you a vector of Booleans, okay. And then for STR count, it basically counts how many times you see a match, okay. So you could, you could try putting A, A here, okay, to get a sense of what it looks like. See, okay. and then str counts two for AA. Okay. And then you could also try a case, you could also, another thing to point out about regular expressions is that case matters, okay? Whether it's lowercase or uppercase. So when you, could, when you do it this way here, you would see that it could not detect A, which is a vowel. So you, here, there are ways to flip the switch to make sure that you could ignore the case, okay? Or you could modify the regular expression to allow for the fact that you are also looking for vowels that are in uppercase, kind of like this. Okay. And if you do it this way, then things will get counted, okay? Then you could have very complicated patterns as I, as I, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Ah, it's called a pipe. Okay, thank you. But the pipe is the one that has a, yeah, well, okay. 
the one with the greater than sign, but yeah, that's an R pipe. Oh. And this one is the yeah. pipe. <laughs> <laughs> the keyboard it's a pipe character not to be confused oh. with the pipe operator <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <For R>. yeah. <laughs> okay thanks for that uh yeah so the the next set of commands is really just to sort of like uh get you to see conversion into lowercase no you conversion into lowercase but you you might not need that if you just modify the regular expression here Okay, uh, and then you could also have this str count to count how many times vo vowels show up in a name, okay, and how many times consonants show up in a name, and then you could do a lot of these pa You could do visualizations uh, afterwards. Yeah, ver vertical bar. Yeah, that also works. But there's also one. <laughs> Yeah, it's deep in deep in my mind. There's there's another name for it. Uh, yeah, uh, next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then there are exercises that sort of like uh, ask you like the name. Uh, let me see. What's this exercise? This exercise is about fifteen point three point one. Yeah. What baby name has the most vowels? Uh, this one has the most vowels. So I should change this to vowels rather than consonants. Sorry. So it's just really adding a, another line to filter out uh, the vowels that match the largest number of vowels, max vowels. And you could have a look there. So, so these are the two... It seems that these are the two names. These are the two names that have the largest number of vowels, eight of them. So Maria del Rosario and Maria Guadalupe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, now now you're infected by by the obsession with that uh, vertical bar. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lydia. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then you could all. There's another question about the highest number of proportion for vowels. So you could create a a proportion of vowels uh, column and then do a filter later on. So I'll I'll leave this alone for now. Um, and then there's another exercise where you're asked to replace the forward slashes with a backslash. Uh, that, this is also vexing. So there's an str replace that could do that. Uh, and you could do that here. So let me just show you. This is what x looks like. Okay. And if you want to replace all of these forward slashes by backslashes, what I did here was really I have a character, I have a character set. So I have a character class. And what I do with the character class is I don't want, I don't match an A, don't match a B, don't match a C, don't match a D, don't match an E. And then I put cases, okay? So I, I have alternation and then exceptions. And then put that in my character list. And then I want to match it uh, at least once, okay? At least once. And then replace it with a backslash, which I here I used the R, R quotation marks kind of representation. You could also use four backslashes if you want to. So let me just show you what this looks like. Now it looks like this, okay? Uh, you could optionally do it this way there oops sorry yeah so this part is sort of like the escaping kind of stuff you know that I that I mentioned before so you have you have what makes a literal backslash again difficult is that you have to escape this backslash is an escape character and you have to escape the escape a couple of times. So that's that's what makes things uh difficult here. Okay. So a literal backslash is backslash backslash, and then you have to escape 
the escape. Uh, and then the exercise also allows you to undo it. Okay. You could also do it in pretty much the same way. I'm not sure why. Um, so the question in the exercise is like, what happens if you attempt to undo the transformation by replacing all backslashes with forward slashes? I was able to undo it by just changing what I want to replace. But I don't know what the intention is. Either they have a different regular expression here. Okay. They have a different matching kind of device in their mind here uh but if i do it this way it it works so yeah so maybe you have something else then the the question might make sense okay and then uh the other exercise is to implement a version of str to lower so basically change every uppercase character into a lowercase uh, character by using str replace all. Uh, this is not this described in the book, no, but there's a way to vectorize uh, str replace all and it's in the help file. Um, so I gave an example here, but this is not all purpose because you could already feel that there's a problem here. If you want to, if you want to do all letters of the alphabet, then you have to change this one into into something that involves all letters of the alphabet, which is annoying. So the one way I've done it is to create is to create this sort of like command and then copy and paste it into into this later on. So and this is where I think str flatten also works and str glue shows up. So you could have a look as well as to how I've done it. If you have question, if you have uh, a different way of doing it, let me know. Uh, it'd be interesting to to find out as well. So, for example, this one, there. So I I was able to put it in that form, and then I'll just copy and paste this whole thing into into this, and then it becomes a, a more general purpose kind of command. And then this one, yeah, yeah. I think the last one is the right one. Yeah, this is the one. And I'll just copy and paste that and then and then I'll I'll do it that way. So this is a little bit manual. It's a, a little bit a manual kind of thing, but it should be possible to put them together. Yeah. So it's I'm just saying copy and paste. I think you could just can't you make it into an object? Uh I I think so. I think so. Maybe maybe we should do that. Uh stuff for lack of a better term. Uh, let me see if this works. So stuff. Uh, so, so this is the pro. I I think this is the problem. So when I, when I. Let me see. Str. This one. I I think I couldn't just do stuff here. Yeah, see, so, so I think this has to be reconverted into something that R would understand as it has to see it this way, in some sense. So, uh, I'm not sure if str view would work there, but probably not. Yeah. So this is so that's why I I left this behind. Yeah, so uh if if you have a if you have a faster way of doing this, maybe I'm overthinking it. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying piping. Oh. Yeah. Can you pipe them or make one objects one after the other or update it? I guess so. So you create so you have turn the letters into a data frame and then do do that. Maybe and then do strc. Uh yeah. Have to think about that. Yeah. Thanks for the suggestion though. Yeah. yeah so this would be fun to play around with like, yeah. like, after the session. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think there's a there's a lot to chew on for this chapter. And I don't think a week is enough to, to do all of this. So um, I don't know what the plan is, uh Lydia, but uh we there's can... still a, a lot to go through. <laughs> 
I mean, we can push it out if you want to continue next week. So that's fine with me. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. So, but it would, it would affect the sort of like the automated. Uh, uh, no, I can I, just let John know. I think, I think as yeah. long as I update it in the spreadsheet, it should be fine. I can check with John. Yeah. yeah, let me check with John. But I feel like it would be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then the next one, I think Kante Kante would be doing it. I think. 